In the two previous videos, we did a discretization of the space domain while leaving the time domain alone. And we could do this either using the finite difference method, that was the first video, or the finite element method, that was the second video, but no matter what we did, we ended up with an initial value problem that we had to deal with, and we're going to deal with it in this video. We're going to consider uh, v prime equals minus alpha a h v plus b h, with v zero equals v naught, which is coming from the initial condition. And what we're going to do is to apply the explicit Euler method to this problem, which comes from the semi-discretization in space. So what I'm going to do is now discretize the time domain. It's about time, right? No pun intended, of course. Uh, so let t be a positive number, and we're going to consider a uniform discretization of 0 t. So we're going to have, well, h t, and uh, we're going to define t n as, uh, well, n h t. And again, uh, as a convention, we're going to use a superscript to uh, use the discretization in, in, in time and a subscript for the discretization in space. All right, so uh, let's actually, let us note bhn, bh computed at tn, and what we're going to have is this. v0 equals v, 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 v of 0, as we said, but we're going to have this, this equation here. vn plus 1 equals vn minus ht alpha a h vn plus ht b h n. Now, what we're saying is that this is a sequence we can actually, we know how to, to, to deal with these types of sequences. So, so basically, it's, it's, it's easy to actually write vn uh, simply with this formula. And, and at this point, you may want to pause the video and make sure you understand every step and make sure you can actually recover all the computations so you know what we're doing. Okay, now, uh, definition. Uh, we will say that a fully discretized method in space and time, that is wn plus 1 equals w, bwn plus dn, is stable in the space norm on Rj if there exists c, that is a positive constant, such that the norm of bn is smaller than c. Now, c, I'm saying is a constant, uh, it may depend on t, but what's important is that it is independent of the discretization of that uh, time uh, domain, okay? So, but I mean, if the time domain is longer, then we can accept that c is changed, but for a given t, uh, c is indeed a constant. Now, if you remember what we did in the introduction, well, we had considered an explicit method for the heat equation that was forward in time and certain in space, so it was a finite difference method that came to this equation, right? And if you remember correctly, what we had in the introduction is, uh, well, we, we run into a problem. So we need to find a sufficient condition for stability, otherwise we're going to have issues. All right, proposition, a sufficient condition for stability of the method Vn plus 1 equals this matrix Vn plus Htfn is that the spectral radius of the matrix here that is uh, just, 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 just before Vn, that is Ij minus Ht alpha Ahx, the spectral radius of this needs to be smaller than 1. Now, we want a sufficient condition, so this is more than 1. Well, we can prove that uh, the, 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 the spectral radius of ij minus ht alpha ahx will be smaller than minus 1 plus ht alpha times the 
radius, the spectral radius of AHX, which we already proved was smaller than 4 over HX squared. So, so what we have is that the, the spectral radius here is going to be smaller than negative 1 plus HT alpha 4 over HX squared. Let me actually write this this way, okay? Now, what we want, I mean, a sufficient condition is that this is smaller than 1. So, so what I'm saying is that this term here being smaller than 1 will give me a sufficient condition to have uh, a, to, to have stability, right? So in other words, well, negative 1 can go on the other side. That's going to be uh, 1 plus 1, known to be 2. Uh, and and so, so, so what I have here is alpha ht over hx squared smaller than one half. What I'm saying is, if this condition is met, then I will have stability. You see, the title of this slide is CFL condition. Let me define uh, this inequality. Uh, this inequality will be called the CFL condition of the explicit method centered in space, forward in time, for the heat equation in this norm. R J two. Now, C F L stands for the last name of three people: uh, Current, uh, also known for the Current Institute, uh, Fredericks and Levy. And these uh, three people actually worked on this um, in the 1920s and basically introduced this condition. Uh, now, this condition describes how you need to choose your time step ht and your, 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 your space step, uh, your discretization step hx in, in, in the space domain. So they, they need to work together uh, and you need to satisfy to meet this condition, otherwise you run into problems. So roughly speaking, what we're saying is that the approximation at the time step n plus 1 must be able to include all the physical information that influences the solution at time step n. And with this, I would like to say that each PDE, uh, we talked about the heat equation here, but each PDE, if you take a different PDE, it will have a different CFL. So let me define the consistency error for the explicit method centered in space. Well, it will be defined by this expression here. Again, pi is the projection onto the grid, right? So if we use the Taylor uh, Lagrange expansion, then max of uh, that expression will be in first order in time and second order in space. Now, let me uh, give you a theorem that, uh, as you know, I mean, consistency and stability implies convergence. So uh, let's actually consider the uh, exact solution to the heat equation, that is u. Let's uh, hx and ht be the discretization in space and time. And of course, we will request that they meet the CFL condition, in other words, alpha ht uh, smaller than hx squared divided by 2. And then Vn converges toward u. The order of convergence is 2 in space and 1 in time. Uh, in the norm 2, then what we're saying is that what we have is that the norm of Vn minus the projection of u onto the grid, again in norm 2, will be O of a x square and O of h t. And in addition to this, under the CFL condition, the maximum principle and the energy dissipativity can be established. Now, for the explicit method, I would like to stress that the CFL implies that h t is smaller than h x uh, square over 2, here I've considered alpha equal to 1. Uh, that is a pretty tough requirement on HT, as we could see in the introduction. So, uh, instead of using the explicit method, uh, we could have used the implicit method, 
And uh, again, if you forgot what, what is an implicit method, well, first you should not forget. And uh, number two, what you can do though is to go back to chapter one and, and see what it is. Um, okay, uh, the implicit method will require solving an equation at each step. But as you know, it is also more stable. Actually, it is unconditionally stable. And during the lab session, we will see the crank Nicholson method. So this is the end of this class on partial differential equations. Take care of yourself and take care of each other.